take a moment and just worship God, the Lord who can change time, the Lord who can change season, the Lord who can change lives, the Lord who gives a new song. Just worship Him this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. King of glory, we bless you. We magnify your name. You are the God Almighty. There is none like you. We bless you. We magnify your name. You are God Almighty. There is none like you. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. And we bless your name. For we know you are God forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We just want to thank God this morning. I want you to thank God for being here. I want you to thank God for sleeping and waking up. I want you to thank God for His grace over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your hand over our life. We thank you. We slept and we woke up. You have always been our God. You never leave us. You never forsake us. To you, O oh God, be all the glory, all the honor and adoration. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's quickly open our Bible to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. We just read from verse 11. It's a scripture that almost all of us know. We can even recite it. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. God says, I have a good thought towards you. A thought of peace and not of evil. This morning, I want you to thank God for thinking great things towards you. For thinking about you and thinking peace. For thinking about you and thinking about a glorious thing. Just thank God and appreciate God in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because you have a great thought towards me. I thank you because the thought you have for me is a great thought. The plans you have for me is a wonderful one. Not of evil, but of good. To give me peace. To give me an expected end. I thank you, Lord. I bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today we are celebrating Mother's Day. We also, I want us to also thank God for our mothers. That God has a great plan for our mothers. God has a great thought towards our mother. Let us thank God for the plans of God for our mothers. Let us thank God for the thought of peace. The thought of giving them an expected end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all our mothers here. To you be all the glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are giving them to us. And we thank you for the great plan you have for them. For the thought you have towards them. To you, O God, be all the glory. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So it means the thought and the plan of God for you to be in this service is that you will be filled with joy. Amen. Hallelujah. And joy comes as a result of so many things. One of the ways that joy manifests is when your prayers are answered. One of the ways that joy manifests in, or a product of joy is the defeating of your enemies. It's when God lifts you up. It's when God opens windows of heaven. When you see that which I've been waiting for it has manifested. So I want you to pray. Lord, today, your plan for me in this service must manifest. I am not going on the same. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Tell God your plan for me in this service will manifest. If it is healing, tell God it must happen. If it is deliverance, it must take place. If it is employment, it must take place. In the name of Jesus, Father, in this service, your plan for each and every one must manifest. It must come to pass. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. 
We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we commit this service into your hand. We invite your presence in this place. Do absolutely only what only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over the atmosphere. Every spirit and anything that is not in alignment with the will of God. Spirit of depression, spirit of frustration, spirit of almost giving up. We cast it out and we declare that the spirit of God will take absolute control in this service. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. So this morning, because it's Mother's Day, I want to welcome us into the house of your family. Help me announce to your neighbor you are not in the presence of the pastor, you are in the house of your father. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory be to God. This is the house of your father. Uh huh. I wanted to say it in Africans for those who are saying, <laughs> but uh, we say, uh, uh, is helping me there. This is abundant life ministries and this branch is called the royal assembly aka celebration <laughs> so we have found that this ministry is founded on the book of john chapter 10 verse 10 can the youth help me the thief still kill and destroy but so the vision of this house is to declare the order of God in the life of his people. So what that means is that whatever God wants you to be, when you come here, you must be that thing. Hallelujah. This is a place where you come as you are, but you will never remain as you are. Hallelujah. So in this place, the anointing of God propel people into the destiny that God has created for you. Hallelujah. We have values and uh, when after the service during the celebration, just look at the, the, the banner, look at the vision and the values. You can also go to our Facebook page and you can educate yourself on that hallelujah now before i welcome all of us i want to first of all ask do we have anybody visiting us for the very first time do i have anyone if you are there just leave your hand oh i have someone We have another hand there. Thank you, my brother. Please, can we send a prayer? There is also another person at the back. Now, I want to ask you respectfully, can you please majestically, royally stand on your feet? Just will give you a card. It's just to take your details, prayer point. We are not going to harass you. We are not going to stress you. It's just to get in touch from time to time. Hallelujah. And if you have any question, please, the details are there. You can always get in touch with us. During the offering, after filling, just drop it in the card. We want to appreciate you for coming. If you have not come, that place you are sitting will have been empty. Hallelujah. And our prayer for you is that as you step into the presence of your father, you will go home with a great testimony. Amen. Please, can you be seated? 
God bless you. Now, I want to also welcome our VVVIP for this service. But we are going to do it differently. Now, we want to welcome our VVVIP. And those are our mothers. So, I'm going to ask all our mothers to sit. And I want all the youths, all the men, to rise on your feet and please help me to celebrate our mothers. you are so special to us but we have a segment where we will say all that we want to say and uh, I also want you to help me to welcome the Queen Mother of the Royal Assembly <laughs> Say when the time comes. Amen. Is the youth I say some mischievous thing. And it's always those not this feeling when celebration comes. But all is in order. You are in the house of your father. Do we all feel welcome? Do, can I also just welcome the prophetess to lead us in praise and worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle. Hallelujah. Do we all feel welcome in the house of the Lord this morning? Can we also welcome Apostle? Can we celebrate? We give God all the glory. Now can we welcome the sponsor and the host of Abundant Life Ministries. The main sponsor and the host of Abundant Life Ministries, Jesus Christ. Can you and say may you be blessed in this service hallelujah please walk around and tell someone may you be blessed in this service may you really be
welcome in the house of the Lord. First impression sorted. Now if you need to take off the shoe, take it off because we are dancing in the presence of the Lord. Don't say I wanted to dance but you know my shoes were a little bit high. So I, they have seen it, they have seen it, they have seen it. So now we are dancing in the presence of the Lord and we are declaring raining. The Holy Spirit is here. But we are asking God we need more rain. We need to be soaked in his presence. Today is a very special day. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. It's raining.
the day of celebrations. Hallelujah. Now in this house we celebrate lives. If there is anyone who celebrated his or her birthday from last week to this week Sunday, can you majestically stand on your feet so that we can celebrate you this morning. Anyone who is celebrating his or her birthday? Anyone? Uh -huh. If Wedding anniversary, please come. Just wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In this world where people are divorcing, yeah. it is a blessing to celebrate anniversaries. Yeah. So we will pray for this marriage. Apostle, can I ask you? Pastor Anna, you can first turn around and then we pray and then we will celebrate the anniversary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's stretch out our hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this family. We thank you for your hand upon their life. Yes. We thank you from the day you brought them together and they say yes, and you have kept them up to this hour. Yes. To you, God, be all the glory in the name of Jesus. Because she's standing here celebrating your goodness, saying it is you who have yeah. done it. We declare that you will step in this home. Yes. Perfect everything that needs to be perfected. Yes. I pray that the light will continue to shine in this home in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, and I pray that your perfect plan for their life, perfect plan for this marriage, will surely manifest yes, in full force in the name of Jesus. And everything they need to be husband and wife and parents, which you have released yes, shall manifest in the name of Jesus. Yes, we Lord. pray that your joy will fill their heart all the days of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So we will celebrate this anniversary. Frank, let's put our hands together for them. Hallelujah. Gracious you, you are welcome. You will organize here yourselves. Thank you.
Yeah, good morning, Apostle and Prophetess. Good morning, Royals, and all our very, very important people, which are our mothers. Uh, so, mother. Mother is a word uh, used to describe very special people. And God gave these special women a very important mission. And for carrying out this mission without any delay, uh, I speak for the young generation when I say thank you and a very happy Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. And uh, some of us would like to share our understanding of this truth. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Odectors Youth. Hallelujah. This is the story of women. Women like Jehovah, a mother who made a plan, a mother who made sure that her children were safe, a mother who trusted God. This is a story of women like Anna, a mother who kept her promise, a mother whose, prayer was, whose prayers were consistent, a mother who gave back to God and was blessed more than she expected. Um, this is a story like, uh, of a woman like Naomi, a mother who advised her child, a mother who never stopped teaching those who needed her guidance. This is a story of women like Mary, a mother who accepted God's plan without knowing the details, a mother who gave herself as a vessel of honor to be used by her master. Now this is a story of women that are sitting in this room, women that went through hardships but still stayed strong, right. women that refused to be intimidated by challenges. Right. This is a story of women who walk with the Lord and are bold because they know they are on the winning side. This is a story of women like you. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, audacious youth, for remembering us on Mother's Day. Can I see a smile from the mothers? Hallelujah. Yes, we are happy. Yes, we are happy to be acknowledged on this day. And on that note, please help me to welcome Apostle. Can I? Can we put our hands together? For the Lord? Glory be to God. Today, we are blessed to have our mothers with us. And uh, audacious youth, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Can we celebrate the audacious youth? <laughs> Hallelujah. We are sitting here in our midst are about four categories. We have the first categories of those who have given birth to their biological children. And I will thank God for blessing your womb. We have another categories of those who we are born by mothers. And I believe all of us fall into that category. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then we have the other category of those of us who had our mothers, but they are not here. And this day might be emotional when we talk of Mother's Day because we have lost our mothers. But this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day, I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. God will always be there. Two other mothers he will raise in your life. And the fourth category are those who have not given birth to their own biological children, but somehow they have been drafted to play the role of mothers. They are looking after, after other people's children. Some of us find ourselves, we are sisters and brothers, but we are playing the role of mothers. Some, you are uncles, you are uh, uncles, you are brothers, you are playing the role of mother, aunties, you are playing the role of mother. This morning, as we celebrate Mother's Day, in whatever category you find yourself, I have this to say to you. God is proud of you. Amen. And God is happy with you. Amen. We've had stories of children who were abandoned at the orphanage. Children who we, are, we just wake up and say this child was dumb at the dumb sites. 
we, we, we hear about children who we are maltreated. But all of us sitting here, we thank God that when our mother conceived us, they did not take that route. They did not take the route of abandoning us or killing us. And just for that singular fact, we want to celebrate all mothers. Amen. Those who are alive and those who have gone to be with the Lord. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. I want to read uh, the scripture for all mothers as we celebrate mothers. It's uh, found in the book of uh, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 31. I believe we all know that when we talk about the virtuous woman. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to take from verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing. She rejoiced in the time to come. Rejoicing the time to come, the time when she will enjoy the fruit of her labor, the time when children will rise up to come and say, Mama, that which you have invested in me have bared fruits. Yeah. She rejoiced in the time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. And it is our prayer for every mother sitting here today and those who are connected online, that every day of your life, you shall be clothed with strength and with honor. God will give you a, re a reason to rejoice in the tomorrow of your children. I pray that as you open your mouth, God will give you wisdom. And wisdom that comes from heaven above will flow through you in the name of Jesus. And all the days of your life, your tongue shall carry the law of kindness. And I pray according to the word of God, your children will rise up and they will call you blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can I ask once more, as we did when we were doing welcoming, all the youths, all the brothers, all the men to rise up once more and let us celebrate our mother. Can you rise up as we celebrate them? Can we celebrate them? Put your hands together. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Seated. We might not say it every day, oh, yeah. but we want you to know that we love you. Amen. We might not act like it, but we want you to know that we appreciate you. Amen. You know, this is the 21st generation. The Gensis don't have uh, social media have robbed us of our vocabulary. Right. We, we don't have the right vocabulary to show kindness, to say we appreciate you. Yeah. So when the Gen Z's chat, you, you just hear, they are very few we, they are few words and emojis have taken everything. Yeah. They put the face, sometimes they put face that is looking up like this, you wonder what are they saying. <laughs> but they have a way of communication. But we are um, on behalf of the youth, yeah. on behalf of your children, on behalf of your husbands, yeah. on behalf of those you have touched, I want to tell you, we appreciate you. Amen. We love you. Amen. And we pray that God will continue to keep you for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, and now on this day, I uh, thought of, okay, we don't have time. It's been so busy. So on behalf of myself, and the children and the royals home and abroad. We also want to celebrate our queen mother, our resident pastor here. Please can you join me here? Uh, we, on behalf of everyone, we also want to say we appreciate you. Uh, 
if there is anyone who will talk about your mothering, I think I'm the first who knows first who have first encounter of what happened. I will sort of roll around on the bed. I don't see you, and I check around. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m., and I will come into the, the, the living room where we pray, and now as I'm coming the corridor, I will hear you calling the name of the children and saying, God bless them. You are praying every day, and you are still going to work in the morning. I see how you will roll around. What is it? I'm picking up this one. I don't know whether they have food. I don't know whether they are fine. And you, in the morning, you will call and you say, are you fine? How many of you know when mama called and the first thing she said, are you fine? You already know she has picked me up. Many times you will go fasting. Say, can I arrange lunch? No, I'm still fasting. Excuse me because you are praying. You are you, 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 are, you just want to see God move in the life of the children. And I, I, I want to say, I tap into that grace. And, and we appreciate you. We appreciate you. You know, sometimes we'll be going, and as we are going, she'll just say, no, please, branch the, ch the, 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 the shop. I say, but we don't know we need to buy. No, I just want to buy a few things. So we will go. And the next thing she's just shopping, they say, what now? No, those ones, I think they, I, I think they should just eat before they go. Then she will go buy all these things and I say, okay, God will continue to provide for. And you, one of the things I've seen is you don't treat children separately. You don't say, these ones are my biological children and these ones are spiritual children. The same love and care you give for the one that came from your womb is the same thing you give to every other one. Yeah. And when you are angry, she will tell me, this one, I'm angry. She will call and she will scold. Then after five minutes, she will call me, can you see again, I walk and I do, um, it's just one of those things. And uh, <laughs> And she will call, and, uh, and we just want to say we appreciate you. So we don't have one to me. I have, I have to hide something for me. So on behalf of everyone, we just want to present this to you to say happy. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, God bless you. I believe very soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm praying, I'm praying that the Lord will bless me. One of these Mother's Day, we will have it in Mauritius and we will stream online. glory for your love and and accepting this mother as she is <laughs> like apostle says i don't wait for tomorrow if something needs to be sorted it needs to be sorted now <laughs> it said now 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 but this morning i was talking with my mom and she said you have a white heart like you have a heart like whites if you are angry, you are angry now. But a few minutes, it's over. And then we move on as if it didn't happen. And, and I, I thank God for, for such a heart that doesn't keep grudges. With me, you know exactly where you stand. If I'm angry, I, I say what it is for. If you need to be scolded, you scold it now. And then love comes. And, and, and then we move on. We move on. So I want to thank God for all of and to thank God for all of you. It is because of you that I'm called a mother. And so I want to thank God for you as well. Apostle, thank you so much for making my mothering easy. When I need to, to drop off uh, uh, my, my anger and my frustrations, you are the first one to receive it. So may the Lord bless you, sir. I celebrate you. Amen. So we give all the glory. Can we move?
move on. Amen. Can we move on? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, now we will take offering today, but I want us to take an offering based on what Apostle said, you know. There are some mothers that did oh that due to due to due to pressure have decided to give away their children. Due to what people say they have decided to give away their children. But our mothers kept us. Our mothers kept us. Some mothers decided to kill their children. Our mothers kept us. And we want to thank God for the fact that they did not abort us. For the fact that they allowed the process of birth to take place. Some of them in, in deep, deep challenges and trouble and hunger. But they kept us. So this morning we want to come to the giver of life with our offerings. Jesus and just say Lord I want to thank you Amen. for my mother wherever she is that she did not abort me that she allowed me to leave I want to thank you for my mother that she allowed me to be a human being and be on earth so our offering today is an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord for our mothers who kept us. Hallelujah. So can take out our offering this morning as we come to the Lord and say thank you to him for our mothers. We are offering for our mothers. Hallelujah. Whether they are here, whether they have gone to be with the Lord, they did not abort us. And we want to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that she decided to keep this pregnancy. Maybe some of them were, were, were pregnant as teenagers. And maybe people were laughing at them. Eh? That, or some of them got pregnant out of wedlock. And people were laughing at them. But they kept us. They kept us. They didn't bow to the pressure that said, you need to abort this child because it will be shameful for you to be pregnant before um, getting married or pregnant while a teenager. They kept us. They kept us. So this morning we just want to come with offering and say, Lord, I thank you for my mother that you gave to me, who kept me, that I'm here this morning. Let's stand on our feet this morning. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. Just lift up your offering. Father, we are coming to you with grateful hearts this morning. We are coming to you with thanksgiving to say thank you for our mothers who decided to keep us alive. Some of, where, some of them were laughed at. Some of them were mocked when they got pregnant with us. Some of them were chased out of their homes, maybe by their parents because of us. Some of them, Lord God, were going through tough times. There were days maybe they were hungry, they didn't have food to eat, but they decided to keep us. For mothers, we say thank you. For that bravery, for that courage. In them to say, I will keep this pregnancy. Irrespective of the conditions. We are coming to say thank you for strengthening them. Thank you for giving them the wisdom to keep us. We bless you, O oh Lord. And this offering this morning is us coming back to you, the giver of life, the source of life, the source of strength to say thank you. Receive our thanksgiving, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. And the ashes will come from the back. Let's just put our offering in the, in the offering baskets as they are coming. Hallelujah. Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord my provider, He keeps on doing great things. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jaira, the Lord my provider, he keeps on.
seated for one minute. Can I ask everyone who gave their tithes to the front, let us receive the blessing from the priest this morning to speak the word of God on us. If you have given your tithes, please come to the front this morning so that we receive our blessings. Amen.
in Jesus.
Lord of Lords. Just go ahead and declare that there is no other God like Him. Just worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. Worship your Father. Worship your Maker. Just cry out to Him this morning. In the word that declare His greatness. Declare His majesty. Declare His glory. Can you stand up? You may go to your to your class. Have a wonderful time there. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for them. They are the leaders of tomorrow. What a wonderful place to be. What an awesome experience to experience the presence of God. And this morning, I pray that your coming to the house of the Lord, your praise, your worship will not be in vain. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I greet you all once more in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are visiting us the first time, second time, third time, God bless you. 
So if you have been visiting us, or if this is the first time, second time, uh, check us out. Check us out. Check our character out. Let the Spirit of God lead you, whether it is authentic or not. When you get a conviction, we want you to join us so that together we can advance the kingdom of God. And I can assure you, when you make that decision, celebration will be the order of the day in your life. And your life will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, I appreciate everyone who are serving in one capacity or the other, worshiping. Thank you very much. God bless you. And once again, okay, celebrate them so that they don't say, ah. it seems they don't like us. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Because sometimes you don't know the love language of some people. Maybe clapping for them is their love language. And if we don't give them, you know, I will be in trouble. Amen. So our mothers also, we hope you are enjoying the presence of God. Please help us to, to celebrate our mother once more. And also our resident pastor, prophetess, thank you for that powerful worship. May the Lord continue to use us. Amen. It's a wonderful day and I know for many of us, a lot of things have been prepared. Uh, Mother Day is so special. When one kid was asked, what is Mother's Day to you? He said, Mother's Day is like birthday. Only that on that day, there are extra cake and meat. Because mothers prepare it nicely for themselves. I don't know how true it is, but I think... It is, is all our experience. Hallelujah. So I believe so many things have been prepared for those who prepared. And uh, we will try to finish so that you can go and celebrate your mother. And you can have wonderful time together. Amen. So we've said that our mothers are so special to us. And uh, we've talked about the mother. So we just want to go straight to the word of God and... Hear what is the Lord saying to us. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I see the Oshana rites. They are in the house of the Lord. You are welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you for our I hope the home cell in Oshana is still going well. Okay, God bless you. We will talk about that later. Amen. All right, let's go to the Word of God. We'll be reading from the book of Exodus chapter 2. We just take four verses. It's, a, it's also a popular story, but the Lord wants to speak to us. The Exodus chapter 2. We just read the first four verses and we make reference to the other one. Amen. If you are there, can we go on? Amen. All right. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of the Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. Verse 3. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bar rushes for him, dubbed it with asphalt and pitch, and put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And verse 4, and his sister stood afar off to know what will be done to him. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. May he speak to us on this special day. I pray that the Holy Spirit will himself interpret the heart and the mind of God to each and every one. And at the end of the day, all of us, especially our mothers, 
we go home with their faith strengthened and being blessed by the hand of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. So this morning as we celebrate our mothers, I will be sharing with us on the message grace for successful mothering. Grace for successful mothering. If I say it in Africa, I say, can I do for the, what is successful in Africa? Teacher. Yeah? Successful. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm getting there. Grace for successful mothering. Motherhood is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to women. Every woman that God has created, he has embedded that element of mothering in them. For us as human, in fact, for every living creature, God has instilled that element of mothering in them. I remember to miss dog got pregnant for the first time. <laughs> And uh, she was now asking, when this dog was now getting to delivery, the dog got tired. And we knew this dog was close to delivery. And she was now worried. You say, okay, okay, have you, so are you not worried? You see, God has given us men, we operate in blocks. <laughs> but so she was concerned. How will this dog deliver? Because she was looking at the dog from human experience. How will she deliver? What must we? Is there a special hospital we must take this dog to? Where the midwife will come and everything. So she called the person from where we got the dog. The woman said, no. The dog knows what to do. When the time comes, so she came, she said, the woman said, the dog knows what to do. She knows when she will give back, when the puppies come, and she knows everything. Don't worry. And I'm telling you, it was our first experience. So when this dog pushed out, she cleaned nicely, she watched over this, and everything went well without any problem. And then I stood, I said, wow, God, you are a wonderful God. So if you can instill this in animals, it means for human being that you created in your own image, you have invested and you have installed that element of motherhood in them. So it's a gift of God to women that they should be mothers. And like I mentioned earlier, not every is you are not a mother because you gave birth to a child. Circumstances and situation can make you to be mothers. You have people who call, I was sharing with you, uh, Prophet, uh, she will wake up and begin to pray as if she push out this baby. So God has created mothers. And he has given them that element of mothering. So it's a gift from God. However, it can also be the most challenging roles that mothers take. To mother a child, it can be a very challenging role. What is more challenging is to raise a child in this corrupt generation. This generation is so corrupt, a lot of perversion, and it is very tough to be a mother in this time. There are powers, there are forces contending with the lives and destiny of children. These powers and forces are stronger 
than the power of mothers whom God has created as a weaker vessel. And when you raise a child, they have to go to school. They are exposed to a whole lot of things. And what makes it challenging further is that this generation are faced with the influx of technology and elements of technology. In our days when we are growing up, uh, mothers don't worry. You go out and you come back. You, you are not, they are not worried. They just know you come back for food. And in that time, many mothers can relate. Every child is a, is a responsibility of everyone in the community to look after them. Ah, you go out, you do nonsense, somebody will scold you and they will spank you. When you get home, you make sure you clean your face. You dry your tears before you enter. Because if they, they know you are crying, they will ask you, what did you do? If you now tell them what you did, double portion for your trouble. But it's not like that today. We are living in a generation where you are skeptical of talking to even your neighbors. Because you don't know what is happening. You can't leave your children with just anyone. Because we are hearing news that are not pleasant. It's a very challenging time. You, you, you talk about evil friends that are agents of corruption. You all talk about, you also talk about economic challenges that mothers face. So mothers don't only face these economic challenges, they also face absent fathers. And another thing that makes it more challenging is that you will not always be around because you have to fend for the children. Yet, in the midst of all this, God who gave you that gift of murdering, God who gave you those children, expects you to succeed. God wants you to succeed as a mother. Hallelujah. And as we celebrate Mother's Day today, it is important for you to know that you can only succeed as a mother by grace. The grace of God. And God has made that grace available to you as a mother. Grace for successful mothering. So you will ask me, what is mothering actually? Mothering is not just getting pregnant and pushing out babies. Because there are many who gave back to a child and push out the baby and they abandon the child with the grandmothers. And I need to speak to the generation of today who want to have their cake and eat it. You get pregnant, you leave your child with your grandmother or the grandmother of the child and you don't look back. And the grandmother is now, after raising you to be an adult, is now thinking, how will I feel this child? They are now using that nigger, that little pension to take care of your own child while you are busy clubbing somewhere. That's not mothering. Because you push out a child does not make you a mother. Am I talking to someone? Amen. Yes. And you see many men, many girls in town on a Friday at the club. They have two, three children. They are doing slave queen. They don't even know what those children ate that night. I'm not talking about when you have a child, you say, I want to continue with my education. 
But mama, please look after this child until I get on my feet. What a, what mother means is that you always look back to check on that child. You always look for at the affairs. You show interest in the upbringing of that child. So what is successful mothering? It is promoting. You promote. You support the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, the social and intellectual development of that child. Meaning as a mother, the gift God has given to you includes the ability to support the child as the child is growing. So you promote and you support the spiritual aspect of the child. Every mother is the first teacher of a child. You promote the physical development of this child. The emotional development of this child. The intellectual development of this child. And you do that from infancy to adulthood. And the aim of mothering is to do this to raise the child to a level where they serve God with their family and they serve the society. What is successful mothering? Or what is mothering? It is identifying the purpose of God for your children and praying them to. That is what mother is all about. Motherhood is not about just giving food to your children. It's one aspect. It is praying them through. It is identifying what God wants the children to be. Mothering is exercising your faith and working with God. To the point of rubbing it off on your children. When I look at social media, and you most of you must have seen, when you see a two year old or one year old mimicking how to pray, it means that child has seen it at home. But when you see a one year old child, Shaking his or her body and dancing and singing the song of a worldly artist, the child must have seen it. Are you with me? So, mothering is working with the Lord, praying, exercising your faith. And letting it roll on your children. That's why the Bible said, train up a child in the way he should grow. So that when he is old, he will know what? The bad. I want you, can I say this here? It is not your duty to plan the future of your child. God has a plan for your child. All you have to do is to pray to identify the plan of God for that child. Hallelujah. In the midst of all this, God loves you so much as a mother that he never wants you to fail. And because he does not want you to fail, he has made available the divine enablement, which is grace, so that you can be a successful mother. And it is my prayer that the grace to be a successful mother is coming upon your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. God is faithful. Whatever you might be facing right now, as a mother, I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not fail. Amen. 
I said you will not fail as a mother. You will not fail as a mother. You will overcome all obstacles in the mighty name of Jesus because grace is available to you. I want every mother to lift up their head and say I receive grace. I receive grace to be a successful mother in the name of Jesus. I was talking to my mother-in-law this morning when we called for her to say Happy Mother's Day. And I was telling her, I was trying to share a bit of this message which I have to preach to her. Jesus said, you must start from Jerusalem. So now I was now telling her what a successful mother is. And I said, every time somebody comes, comes to you and say, on social media, we see your daughter preaching the gospel. What they are saying is this, Mama, you are succeeding as a mother because you raise her. So for every mother sitting here, you might think I am not successful because certain things have not come to pass. Expectation has not been met. May I announce to you, because your child is in this house, this morning, you are a successful mother. Because you are able to bring your child to the house of the Lord, you are a successful mother. And by the reason of this message, I declare over your life, you will continue to be successful. I say you will continue to be successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Every crooked way, the Lord will make it straight in the name of Jesus. If you are here this morning and your mother is not here, maybe she is somewhere, may I announce to you, because your mother, when she conceived you, she did not abort you. She is a successful mother. It's not about the money you have. It's not about the English you speak. It's not about the dress. It's about the products you have released. You might not be where you want to be, but I can tell you, because your mother has helped you to be where you are now, she is a successful mother. Can we celebrate our mother this morning? So this morning I want to share with you grace about successful Mother. The Bible said in First Peter chapter 5, verse 10, he said the God of all grace. Meaning there are many dimensions of grace. So I want to share a few dimensions of grace which you need as a mother to succeed. And we will be looking at a woman who walked in that grace and she was able to be written in the word of God and we can say she is or she was a successful mother. Somebody say amen. amen. The first grace I'll be talking about is the grace to protect. The grace to protect your child. Hallelujah. In the text we saw a mother who Face the most difficult challenge at the time she gave back to this child. It's the worst time for any mother to give back to a child. Because at that time, the Israelites were living in Goshen and Ham of Egypt. And they were giving back because they were fruitful. So it got to a point. The king and his advice is say, ah, these people we outnumber also. So what do we need to do? Let us do something to stop the growth. So they made a law. Any Hebrew woman that give back to a child, check if the child is a male child, 
kill the child. And that explains to us why there is so much attack on the male child. If you go, I had opportunity of attending the graduation of prophetess a few years ago. And when we they gave you that book where they write the list of everybody that graduates. And when I look at the list of everybody that graduated in every department, I saw over 85% were female. Only 15% male. I had opportunity of lecturing one of the school and I will also mark the exam papers. When I check, sometimes 100% are female. Sometimes out of the whole student, only one male. And this explains, and you see, is, if you look at that, you will say, is this nation lacking male? No, they are not lacking male. There are a lot of male, but where they are they? They are in the Shabi. They are drinking away their destiny. They are planning how to go and rob, to get money, to go and steal. Lord have mercy. It didn't start today, it started then. Because the king knew the way you will grow, or the only way you will grow, is to attack the one that carries the seed. And that is why there's so much attack on men. We talk about that another day. So that was the law. Kill every male child. I can imagine the frustration and the pain when every mother was supposed to be happy with the pregnancy. Yeah. And this woman was legally married. He was married in the house of Levi, those who praise the Lord. Well, however, from month one, month two, month three, she's thinking, is this a boy or a girl? I don't want my child to die. And she will be saying, I command you, you must be a girl. Because at that time, there was no sonar. So you are living in doubt. You are living in fear. You don't even know what will happen. Imagine when the water broke and the midwives came and she was about to push out. She was not thinking about anything. All she was thinking was, is he a boy? And will my child die? The king wanted them to kill all the child. But this woman decided after giving birth to this child and she saw it's a male child. She said, I will not give up my child. There is a law out there. System has been put out there to destroy my child. But I choose not to allow my child to die. And the Bible said she kept the child for three months at home. Which means she did not go for what you call, is it Antinata? Yeah. Eh? No, Antinata is before you give back. Hey, it's a long time now. Eh? To check up. Eh? She didn't take the child for immunization. She kept the child at home. But in the midst of this, remember, they were living in a foreign land. She could have been in trouble. She knows danger lies ahead. But I believe God supplied grace. God enabled her to be brave. To make that bold decision. I will not allow my child to be killed. She walked in that grace and said I will protect my child. Their mothers were in a generation where the pharaoh of this world is after our children. He does this through social media. The cell phones are there and they are there to destroy our children. TV programs are there. It is even very dangerous for you to allow young people 
to watch TV alone because you must make sure what is what is being censored. Cartoons that used to be innocent has now been corrupted. They are now teaching children. You can choose either to be a boy or a girl. You are seeing cartoons being released to our children where two men are raising up a child and they are telling these children this is the wife this is the husband and the child will look around but my mother is a woman and my father is a man but my favorite cartoon said the wife is a man and the man and on the program they will put the age two years Pharaoh is out to destroy children in different ways. I know you are busy. I know you need to go to work. I know you need to make ends meet. I know you have your own challenges. You have challenges with families. It's not only this child. You cannot now put your life on a hold just because of this child. And because of all these challenges, many have surrendered their mothering to others. Yes, I know your heart is there. You know you have to be there for your child. But the pressure of life is too much. But this morning, I have come to announce to you, grace is available. I say grace is available. And I pray that that grace will work for you. That you will be able to protect your child from every activity of Pharaoh in the name of Jesus. The protection we are talking about requires of you to do more than just giving physical protection. The protection we are talking about involves you teaching them the commandment of God. The protection we are talking about it, 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 it requires you to be there to give them morals, to tell them this is right and this is wrong. The protection we are talking about it, it requires you as a mother to tell your little child that's not how a girl should sit. To tell your little boy, you don't hit a woman. Because the boy has watched a movie and he could see how a man was beating a woman. But it's your duty to protect your child by giving the right information. It's so tough nowadays. That if a child is delivered today, wah, wah, the next thing they are asking is, where is your cell phone? When they get the cell phone, they are asking, what is the passcode of the Wi-Fi? A newborn baby. <laughs> Give a three months baby a toy cell phone, they throw it away. They identify the difference between a toy and a real phone. And as mothers, we are falling in the trap of this because we are so busy. So to silence our children, we give them the cell phone. We even download movies. They say, just watch, just watch. So that can. And through this, Pharaoh is busy killing the destiny of our children. But it's time to rise up in the midst of busyness in the midst of challenges to be able to say lord i receive your grace i receive your grace even when my child is playing tantrums i will not give them to pharaoh when my child is disturbing me though i want to pray i receive grace to multitask and god is receiving releasing that grace in the name of jesus Receive that grace and you shall be a successful mother in the mighty name of Jesus. The next grace I want to talk about is the grace to identify God's purpose 
for the lives of your children. The grace to identify God's purpose for the lives of your children. We read this morning, the Lord said, I know the plans that I have for you. Now we will ask, what prepared Moses' mother to walk in the grace of protecting this child? Because if something is not precious, you will not risk your life to protect it. Huh? I read a funny story about a lawyer who was in an accident. While he was walking, a car bumped him. And when he landed, the car blew up. When he went up, he was falling down. He made sure he landed, but his left hand was up like this. When he fell in the drain, he made sure his hand was up like this. So his friend rushed and they took him and said, but why is your hand standing like this? He said, I have a Rolex watch. It is very expensive. <laughs> So when something is precious and you know the value, you will know, you will do everything to protect. So the reason that made Moses' mother call Jokube to embrace the grace of protecting is because another grace was at her in her life, working in her life. And that is the grace to identify God's purpose. In verse 2, the Bible said, The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. Ah, okay. Man said, ah, He's beautiful. What has that got to do? If you read in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 20, the Bible said it was at this time that Moses was born. And the Bible recalls, he said, and he was lovely in the sight of God. So Acts chapter 7 verse 20 help us to break down what it means when they say Moses was a beautiful child. So it could mean that when Moses was born, God impressed something in the heart of the mother. Just like God did with Mary and Joseph. And she, they heard that this child is not ordinary. So God must have implanted something in the heart of mothers. And you see, mothers are blessed with something wonderful. Which I wish I can have. The world call it the sixth sense. They have that discernment. When they see, then they, they have that inner eye to say, this is it. So when the mother got this child, she looked at the child and she felt there is a plan of God for this child. And because of that, she decided, I'm not going to keep, allow this child to die. Yes. Everybody might see your child as ordinary, but as a mother, you need to see there is something in this child. The child might be doing funny stuff, but you are there to say there is a grace of God on this child. I will not give up on this child. I will keep praying on this child. Family can give up on the child, but you will say, I know without any shadow of doubt there is a plan of God for this child. And that is grace. Grace to identify. Grace to see. Mothers who don't have that grace listen to what people say and they give up on their children. I've seen children who have bright future and because the mothers
do not have the grace to identify God's plan. They listen to counselors. They listen to teachers. They listen to family. And they send their children to where they are not supposed to be. But this mother, when she saw the child, she said there is something on this child. I might not understand it, but I know this child is special. I might not know what it is, but I know this is unusual. And I will do everything to protect my child. I will go extra mile to protect this child. Today, God is releasing that grace over your life. I say God is releasing that grace over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. It is that grace that will make you to say, <laughs> Even if they give my child zero in the school, there is a plan of God for the life of this child. Hallelujah. Even if they say they caught him drinking, I still believe there is a plan of God on this child. I will not give my child away. And I know I have mothers like that here who have that grace who say, I know my child is not ordinary. Let's look at the next grace which you need for successful mothering. The third grace I want to talk about is the grace of contentment. The grace to be contented with available resources. When you are contented, you thank God for what you have. And you know there is more in the future. But you make use of what you have. You don't complain. You don't give up. You just walk in the atmosphere of appreciation. So in this scripture. After she hid the child for three months. It was becoming harder to hide the child. Probably this child is crying loud. And the uh, the, the, the Egyptian around who are spies, she was afraid they might hear. And she said, hey, I can't hide this child. I need to move to the next plan. And she was afraid that this child needs to go out. So it was difficult. In today's world, if you say, Apostle said we should protect our child. Because there's Pharaoh outside, and you don't allow your child to go to school, you don't allow your child to go out. So one day, social worker will knock on your door. There are some mothers or parents, if you ask the child is growing up, they will employ a nanny, they will stay at home. You say, Why is the child not going to pre primary? Uh -uh. I don't want the child to be polluted. But one day, you must release the child. Yeah. The child will go out. Yeah. The child must go to school. Yeah. Uh, because you will not be there. Even if you say, I have money, I will do homeschooling. A day will come. No matter the homeschooling you do, the child will write a child. The child must still go out. So it will get to that point where the child, after your protection, needs to be released. So in verse 3, the Bible says, when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark. And she made an ark for him. And she covered the ark so that it does not sink. I was thinking, probably, this woman heard the story that when there was flood, God asked Noah to make an ark. Maybe. And she felt, if I make an ark, God who protected my son, who protected Noah, will protect my son. Maybe. So she made an ark with what was available. Now the question that will come to mind is why did she make an ark of basket? Why did she not get a nice little boat? Why did she get something sophisticated? The answer is, that is all she had. That is all was available. 
Remember in the time, the people were walking and they were building with straws. So it means all around you can find these straws and all the elements. That's almost a feeling. She did all she could to keep that child for three months. And I believe when she was making that basket, she must be asking herself, is this enough? Something might be going in on in her mind. Will this protect my child? But you know what? It was enough. Because at the end of the day, this same Moses baby came to write this story that we are reading today. And that was grace. Grace to be contented in the little resources you have. Grace to be able to trust God in that which God has given to you. There is mother. Maybe you are at the point where you need to release your children to go out into the world. And you are thinking you don't have enough. I am here to announce to you, the little you have is more than enough. The little you have is more than enough. Maybe you are asking yourself, do I have what it takes to send this child to school? The little you have is more than enough. God has a way of multiplying the little that you have. You are asking yourself, am I capable of leading this child to Jesus? Do Am I capable of conducting Bible study at home? I am telling you, the little you have is enough. That little Bible study you got in that church where you went for your baptism is enough. Just teach your child. It is enough. That little English, that little African you can speak. That little prayer, you can pray. Even if it is 30 seconds, it is more than Don't say, I can pray like apostle and prophetess. How can I pray my child through? That little is And I want you to know, Second Peter chapter 1, if you read verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power has given us everything. How many things? Everything that you need for life and for godliness. What you have and you think is not enough is actually more than enough. And I pray that that grace is coming upon you. I say that grace is coming upon you. That grace that will help you to see beyond your limitation. That grace that will help you to trust and be able to use that which you have. And may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then lastly, the grace you need for successful modeling is the grace to trust God. The grace to trust God. Jokobet knew it was only God that could save her child. So she trusted God to take care of him. God took care of that child. That the child grew up to come and write this Bible that we are reading. She took the child and she put the child in the water. She made the hack. Say, so where am I going to place this child? She prayed for the child. Say, so where am I going to put this child? She interceded for the child. Say, so where am I going to put this child? Say, so I'll put this child on the water, the word of God. Let it flow. Let it flow. And God 
will take care of the rest. Grace to trust in God. And what happened? If you read this story, God work it out. God work it out. God used the enemy to take care of Moses. No evil came upon Moses. I am here to announce to every mother, God is going to work it out. I say, God is going to work it out. No evil came upon Moses. No evil will come upon your child. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today, if ever we send down a loudspeaker to us, and the angels give microphone to Moses' mother, and we ask Moses' mother, how did you make it? This is what I believe she will tell us. It was grace. It was grace. It was not me. It was grace. Today I pray that that same grace will work for you. That same grace will work for all mothers. In the name of Jesus. Moses did not die. Your child will not die. Pharaoh could not kill Moses. I declare over your life. I declare over your children. I declare over everyone. God has given to you. Everything that represents Pharaoh will not make you cry. You will not cry over your children. You will not regret over your children. Your children will become what God wants them to be in the name of Jesus. Moses was able to fulfill destiny. Your child shall fulfill destiny because grace is available to you. Grace work for Jacobet. Grace will work for you. Do you actually know that grace worked for this woman in such a large way <laughs> that we can pray. You can make it your prayer for Lord. The grace that worked for Jacob, let it work for me. Do you know that woman raised three children? Before Moses, she raised Miriam, Moses' brother. And after Moses, she gave back to another one called Aaron. And the beauty of it is that three of these children served in the vineyard of the Lord. Moses was, became an apostle and the senior pastor. Mary was a prophetess and the worship leader. Aaron, assistant pastor who was serving every one of the seed that came out of her womb served the Lord. I declare over every mother here, every children coming out of your womb, they will serve the Lord. And they will serve the Lord. I said they will serve the Lord. I pray for every child here. Everyone has come out of the womb of a mother. You will serve the Lord. God will use you to advance his agenda in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall not be heard of your children. One is in the, the prison. One is a sex worker. One is an alcoholic. I reject that for you. I reject that for you. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for every child that is here. Every spirit of Pharaoh looking to attack your destiny. I declare they have failed. I declare they have failed. I declare they have failed. In the name of Jesus, your light will shine. You shall be a mouthpiece of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Today, we read about joke better. Tomorrow, your story will be talked about in your family. You shall be a point of reference. Uh, and they will say, that mother is a successful mother. Say, look at that house. She raised children that are serving the Lord. People will use your name as a point of contact to pray to the Lord. And say, Lord, if you can do it for prophetess, do it for me. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. you to be successful and anything 
that is happening in the life of any mother that is not aligning with success today in the name of Jesus God will rewrite your story God will rewrite your story I say God will rewrite your story in the name of Jesus and on that note once again I say Happy Mother's Day. And I want you, as a mother, to declare, I am a successful mother. And for every child here, I want you to declare, my mother is a successful mother. And I want you to declare, when I grow up, I shall be a successful mother. When I grow up, I shall be a successful mother. It shall be so in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and celebrate. Let's rise on our feet as we're going to pray. Manda lebre gedebosia. Kente leba kayada kalia. Elido si kai kayawa. His grace is working. Yes. His grace will make you successful. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for all mothers today. But before I pray, permit me to do this. As we all close our eyes. If you are here, we talk about grace. Grace is only available for some. This grace I'm talking about is for those who have accepted Jesus in their life. Who have made him their Lord and Savior. So as we close our eyes. I want you to ask yourself. Do I have a relationship with Jesus? Do I want this grace? Even if you are a young person. One day you will also become a mother or a father. And you need this grace to work for you. And it is very wonderful for this grace to go ahead and level mountains. This grace will make for every woman that the right man will locate you. This grace will make for every man to locate the right woman. And before we go on to pray, if you are here, you say, I need Jesus. I want to invite him in my life. Because I need his grace. I'm tired of the way I'm living. But I've heard the word. I know there's a better life. There's victory in this. Life that Jesus gave. I want that life. He said it did come to kill, steal and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. And you say no. There are so many things that are oppressing me. Many things that disturbing my peace. But the word of God say. Anyone who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you say, this morning or afternoon, I want to come to Jesus. Because Jesus is calling you. Wherever you are, I just want you to lift up your hand there. And I want to pray. You are the first I want to pray. Do I have anyone? I see a hand at the back there. Thank you for those hands at the back. Thank you. God bless you. Is there still any other hand on this side? Hallelujah. Just lift it up so that I can see. Because I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. is calling you. Come to him. We work it out. Yes, indeed. God, we work it out. One thing I know. One thing I found. That my God, God we will. work it out. Yes, indeed.
lift up their hand. I want to pray for you first before I pray. For you. If you can, I just want to ask you to humbly just come forward. Ushers, please help those who lift up their hand. I just want to pray with you. Just come forward here on the right carpet. Hallelujah. And as they come, please let's put our heads together. Hallelujah. See young boy. Oh wow. We'll walk it out. Yes, we will. Do I see how many one? Just come we'll to walk it out. One thing I know. There is nothing to be ashamed of. One thing you put your hands up. Just God, my God. Just we'll come. God, we walk it out. out. Yes, we will. so she can see it. Hallelujah. One thing I found Hallelujah. That my God, my God will walk it out. Just now listen to me. This step you take now is going to speak for you in tomorrow. Whatever it is, you have come to a God who is able to work it out. Whatever you're going through, pain, addiction, things you feel, I can't do it, I, I don't like it, but I'm still doing it. He's able. And as you come to Jesus, He's going to work it out. He's going to give you a new life. And your life will never remain the same. I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. You died for me. And you rose again. I believe that you are Lord. Today, I confess all my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. I invite you, Jesus, into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And from today, I will serve you all the days of my life according to your word I receive eternal life in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah Can we stretch our hands towards them Father in the name of Jesus we thank you this is the greatest miracle. Hmm. A sinner coming back home. And I know there is rejoicing in heaven in the presence of angels because of this. Therefore I commit them into your hand. Seal them 
by the seal of the Holy Spirit. From today we declare, let them start to experience life in abundance. Life in abundance. Life in abundance. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now we just come to you. I'm just going to pray for you one on one. Just receive before we go on. Hallelujah. Let's just pray and intercede. We work it out. Yes, my God. We work it out. One thing I know. One thing I found. That my God. We work it out. Yes, my God. We work it out. Yes, he will. congratulations to all of you. This is the best decision you have taken. And what you did, you just slapped the devil. You just put the devil to shame. And very soon I begin to see you testifying about the goodness of God. In the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate? Can we celebrate? Hallelujah. Now I'm going to ask you, the way are the evangelists team? You're just going to follow them. They're going to share a few things with you. Then you can come back to join us. Amen. Let's celebrate them as they go. How they go. How they go. Just leave her there, leave her. How they. Amen. You know what to do. Amen. Now I want to pray for mothers. Are we see excited to be in the oh, yes. presence of the Lord? Yes. Prophetess, God bless you. Flesh and blood did not reveal that song. You just took it out of my heart. So I want to pray for mothers. Now when I'm praying for mothers, it means if your mother is not here, you should stand in for your mother. Right. I'm praying for aspiring mothers. Uh, those who tomorrow you will be mothers. And some of the youth already soon will be giving you to your husband. <laughs> don't worry. You, you, you will still even don't be afraid. I will lose my enjoyment as a youth. If I now get married, yeah, we say, look at your mother. We still, we still bubble around you, so it's, but at the right time. Hallelujah, at the right time. Amen. We're going to take that song again. And Matthew chapter 11, 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we want to pray for every mother that God is going to work it out. And as he work it out, he's going to give you rest. So you are standing here for your mother that in the life of my mother, God will work it out and he will give her rest. They have labored so much, but God is going to give her rest. Hallelujah. And for every child that is here, the rest includes you making it in life. 
The rest include you succeeding in life. The rest include God healing your mother. The rest include God taking away shame and giving her faith. And that's what we want to pray. So, for all the mothers here, I know just let them sit where they are. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. So if there is any child here and your mother is sitting there, I just want you to just go and stand next to your mother. Just go stand next to your mother. Hallelujah. If your mother is there at the back, just go stand next to your mother. For those of you who are here, if possible, you're not compulsory, if possible, If possible, if you have the picture of your mother on your cell phone, just put it there. If you can write the name of your mother on the paper, just do it. Say you are standing for your mother. We want to pray for all mothers. Hallelujah. Yeah, those who are serving on the altar, it's okay. Altar covers us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just sing as prophetess is leading us in that song. If you want to look for the picture of your mother. Actually, if, if I go through your picture, if I... I'm saying if you are a child here and I look at your phone, you can't find the picture of your mother. I must say, come here, I will give you three shampoo. How can the picture of your mother not be on your phone? It's an error. It has to be corrected. So if you don't have it, I'm challenging you. Just go, go. Make sure, Mama, I need your picture on my phone. Eh? Yeah. Okay. resources 
in the name of Jesus every mother crying here for their children I declare this hour the end of crying has come God is turning it around God is touching your children and is bringing them back home every child that has gone I command them wherever they are I bring them home I bring them home home to the feet of the Lord in the name of Jesus I bring every children represented here in the mighty name of Jesus because Moses was able to achieve purpose Daniel achieved purpose Samuel achieved purpose Jesus achieved purpose I declare you will achieve purpose God will protect you in the name of Jesus every children here who have lost their mother today you are a God who say I will be unto you as a mother I pray that the love of God as a mother will flow into your heart God will fill that void God will fill that void God will raise a helper that he will use to fill that vacuum in your life in the name of Jesus for every mother here who is trusting you for source of income today I declare the Lord shall be your shepherd and he will provide all your need in the name of Jesus you will not lack any good thing in the name of Jesus and for every mother you have labored you have labored I declare you will eat the fruit of your labor you will eat the fruit of your labor in the name of Jesus when it is time for you to enjoy the fruit of your labor when your children will graduate when they will get married and they need you to be there you will not be missing you will not be sick another person will not represent you in the name of jesus and i pray lord whatever is the case you know it work it out I say, Lord, work it out. Lord, work it out. Lord, work it out. Do what only you can do. Make the impossible possible. Make the impossible possible. Give them a new song. Give them a new testimony. And I decree under this atmosphere and anointing, there is a lifting up. Lift up our mothers in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. As they continue to sing, I will just come from seat to seat. And I'm just coming to anoint all mothers. Hallelujah. God, we work it out. Yes, my God, we work it out. One thing I know, one thing I found, that my God will work it out. I know that God will work it out. Yes, my God.
have the picture of your mother or you wrote the name, just come out here. You are young ones. You can come. Just come. Hallelujah. You are standing. You are standing in God for your mother. So just come forward. I just pray for you as you stand in the God for your mother. Amen.
We are successful mothers. Yeah, tell your neighbor, I am a successful mother. I am a successful mother. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will make it possible. God will work it out. Whatever is not working out, the Lord will work it out. Amen. As we walk out of this place, he has already done just that. So we give God all the glory. So thank you. Can we put our hands together and celebrate the name of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says those who are working on the altar, those that are saving God, are worthy of double honor. Amen. Double honor. Apostle, we celebrate you. We thank you for taking time to hear from God for us. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord work it out for you as well. Everything that he needs to work out, the prayers that you are praying, the, the petitions that you are making to God, may the Lord work it out for you. And may there be a testimony of answered prayers in your life as well. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have come to the end of today's service. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we normally don't stay this long, but it's because it's Mother's Day. The program is a bit lengthy. By 12, we are already done. So please don't write us off and say, ah, this church is staying long. <laughs> please do visit us again. Next Sunday might be shorter. Yeah, we are by 12, we are we are always uh, to the end. But today is a special day. So today, uh, for mothers, there's a special cake and tea available for the mothers. Please, as we stand around the outside, uh, hospitality, Princess Ingrid, Princess Sharon, are we ready outside? Okay, so they will, the, the cake is here, so they will cut in such a way that all of us, we know we don't want to keep you long on Mother's Day. And that is why there was no emphasis on prophetess today. Because today we are celebrating all the mothers. When it is my birthday, yes, then we make noise for prophets. But today is a day for every mother in the royal house. Hallelujah. Thank you for all the calls, the messages, the texts that came in for me in the morning. I truly, truly appreciate you all. May the Lord bless you. And like I said in the morning, I thank God it is because of you. Because of you, I'm called the mother. And I appreciate all of you. So today, on behalf of Royal Assembly, Royal Assembly arranged for tea and coffee for every mother. If mothers eat up the cake, children, ask us. <laughs> but the hospitality team will make sure that we all get a piece of cake. Like I said, we don't want to keep you long because maybe children prepared something at home or children want to take out the mothers or mothers want to go home quickly to be spoiled. So please just for five, ten minutes, hang around and just bring your cup of tea, cup of coffee and, and take a piece of cake and, and celebrate before you leave. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Pastor Anna, can you come and close off for us the service today? Our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you to honor you for this beautiful service. Indeed, this is the day you have made, oh God. Life has been transformed, oh God. Indeed, you have declared your order in, the, in your life, oh God, in the life of your people. Lord God Almighty, thank you, Father God, for the vessels that you have used so mightily, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you refill, oh God. When the wine is empty, Lord, when the vessel is empty, put more wine. A new wine will declare, oh God, that will declare a new season in the life of your people, oh God. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the mothers, oh God, for the multitask that they are doing in our life, oh God. We just want to thank you for all grace that you have released of our life, oh God. And we declare, we say, surely, goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.